Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. Yes, you can call us a webinar. We won't be offended. Um, not much. <laughs> um, well, we cover anything that may be of interest to librarians. Um, we do these sessions live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, um, but they are all recorded, so if you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. You can always go to our website and watch all of the archives of all our recordings um, there. We post recordings. If there's a, a presentation or slides involved or handouts that are up there, any websites that are included and mentioned during the session, we put into the Library Commission's Delicious account, so those are all linked there as well. So you have access to everything after the fact. Um, we do a mixture of things here, presentations, book reviews, mini training sessions, um, basically anything related to libraries um, we can put on and have on the show. We have um, guest speakers that come in sometimes, and sometimes we have Nebraska Library Commission staff, which is what we have this morning. This morning, next to me is Mary Sowers, who is the Government Information Services. It's a relatively new title, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Government Information Services Librarian here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Good morning, and, Krista. Good morning, Mary. Um, and we did a session in July Correct. on the Health Care Act and libraries. Um, it was right after ALA, the annual ALA conference, mm -hmm. where um, ALA announced, it depends on your point of opinion, good thing or bad thing, <laughs> that libraries can help consumers apply for the new healthcare market and the healthcare marketplace. So we did a really quick on the fly through something together on um, what we knew then. Uh, and we decided a lot has come changed since then, which yes, is good. Absolutely. More resources out there, more things are available. So we're doing, I decided to do an update for it. Mm -hmm. um, it's a month till this actually goes. That's correct. Happens. October so. 1st. <laughs> it is, and it's going yeah. by very quickly. <laughs> yes, it is. I was very surprised that we were ready. You know, we had to do another one already, and it's like, yes, it's coming up. So this is an update to it. Um, some Probably some stuff that we mentioned before just to make sure you're up on yes. it and what's going on um, with it. So I will just hand over to Mary, and she will take it away and tell you um, hopefully everything you need to know. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us, and uh, I hope in the next hour I'll be able to give you some information that will help you help your patrons in uh, enrolling uh, for health care insurance through the Affordable Health Care Act and the health care marketplace. Um, there is a lot of information out there. There are lots of websites that have information, but what I've tried to do this morning is to uh, pull and pull information and then compress it into some information that you can take back to your libraries for your staff um, and training them to uh, be prepared for when people start asking questions if they haven't already, uh, if, mm. if your patrons haven't already. The first thing I wanted to do, and I realize that some of this will be a repeat, but this is uh, just basic important information um, as an overview of ACA. Uh, the, uh, Affordable Hair, the Affordable Care Act. <laughs> it's sometimes a mouthful. Um, health insurance marketplace is, um, has been created uh, as a result of the Affordable Care Act um, as a new way to find health coverage that fits everyone's budget and needs. With one application, patrons can see all of the health plan options and enroll. They can compare plans based on price, benefits, quality, and other important features before making a choice. They'll also find out if they can get lower costs on their premiums. Uh, and for a lot of people, that's a very important thing. And that was one of the uh, main things um, built into the Affordable Care Act and the whole health insurance marketplace idea was um, being able to make it affordable and make it less expensive. Um, so they can find out if they can get lower costs on their premiums for, for private insurance. They can find out if they qualify for lower out-of-pocket costs, lower um, co-pays when they go to the doctor, or if there are bills left over that insurance doesn't uh, cover, um, they might be able to um, get those reduced in cost so that they can actually afford them. Because sometimes, and I know I've been there, um, the out-of-pocket costs can be kind of prohibitive. So the marketplace will also tell them if they can qualify for low cost or free coverage 
available through Medicaid or the Children's Health Insurance Program, also known as CHIP. So that's just a real quick basic. Um, next is starting October 1st, 2013. So we're at just under a month here. The Health Insurance Marketplace, um, also known as the Health Insurance Exchange or Health uh, Marketplace Exchange, will begin open enrollment. Unfortunately, plans and prices are not available until October 1st. Um, at the moment, insurance companies in the states are, uh, have applied and are receiving approval for uh, their participation in the marketplace uh, for each state. And uh, like I said, unfortunately, that will not be available until October 1st. Um, coverage can start as soon as October 1st. And yes, I didn't know it could be that. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I apologize. I read that wrong. <laughs> it can actually start as, as January, as soon oh, as okay. January 1st, uh, 2014. And open enrollment ends March 31st, 2014. To receive coverage by January 1st, enrollment must be completed by December 15th. So if you want coverage to start, or a patron wants coverage to start by January 1st, um, and also it could depend on the supplier, uh, the provider that they choose. Um, enrollment must be done by December 15th. If they, uh, they can still apply through March 31st, but the longer after the 15th that they apply, the longer past January 1st um, coverage could begin. So just something to keep in mind when people are asking questions about the dates. The Marketplace website, um, healthcare.gov, uh, will be the primary tool for delivering information to patrons about their health care coverage options. Now, I am going to um, show you, uh, this is the main healthcare.gov. Now, my presentation this morning is definitely um, centered around Nebraska and things that we are doing here in Nebraska um, to help you prepare. But just to, uh, for all of our listeners who are logged in from other places in, in the country this morning, um, when you go to healthcare.gov, um, you will need to go to what is the marketplace in my state. Um, and then you can scroll down, get state information, select your state. I have noticed that we have a lot of people from Indiana um, logged in this morning and joining us. Welcome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then as soon as um, that comes up, it says if you live in Indiana, you'll use this website, uh, healthcare.gov, to apply for coverage. So um, Indiana, along with Nebraska is also using the uh, federally facilitated, facilitated website, healthcare.gov, um, for patrons to enroll in healthcare coverage. So like I said, um, healthcare.gov will be the primary tool for delivering information. And um, this, that website also has um, language um, sites uh, within it. So there is um, the Spanish uh, that's right up here at the top. But um, if Um, I just typed in language is available, but I've also got it uh, linked in my PowerPoint presentation, which you'll have access to later. Um, you can, um, uh, where is it? I apologize. Let me just go back to it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just embedded it here. <laughs> Way easier. Yeah. Yeah. Other language resources. There it is. Okay. Um, in addition to um, English and Spanish, there are 12, um, yeah, there are 12 other languages. Um, and so you can just click on one of these and then it will uh, 
translate into that for uh, your patrons. So um, I, I am planning to come back to healthcare.gov more towards the end of the presentation this morning. We've got a lot of information to go through. And I'm going to say this more than once. Healthcare.gov is the one website that you need to be most familiar with in guiding your patrons. Mm -hmm. uh, so if people come in and they say, uh, what website do I go to to get enrolled? Healthcare.gov um, is the first place you start. Um, if they're not, sh if they're from another state, but they happen to be in your library that uses the government website, they can still come to healthcare.gov, go to the state that, uh, and then from there go to the location of their healthcare exchange. Yeah, but um, again, I'm going to say healthcare.gov is the one website that all librarians and frontline service people need to explore extensively. Be very, very familiar with it. Uh, be able to navigate through the entire thing so that you're really comfortable um, with um, what people are asking and where to go to. Mm -hmm. So, um, and just um, some other quick things as an overview. Patrons will be able to apply online, by mail, telephone, or in person. But just like taxes, uh, online is preferred. <laughs> um, government is pushing online applications um, for the healthcare marketplace just like they are for income taxes these mm -hmm. days. Um, paper will be available. The, ap the paper application is not available just yet, but as of October 1st um, at the healthcare.gov, it will be available so that libraries can print out paper for their patrons if they ask for it, just like we do for tax forms. Yeah, that's um, always nice to have it's like a cheat sheet ahead of time. Uh, yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and I'm, um, a little bit later on, I'm going to try to give you some um, ideas um, for ways to have you know, ready uh, handouts and, and cheat sheets for patrons. Okay. I do have one question that relates to the sure. schedule of it, um, the enrollment ending on March 31st. What happens after March 31st? Can they still sign up? And I think what it is is that the, there's, it's like, I, I don't know what we have here is there's an enrollment period. Yes. And it opens up again every year. That's correct. They have the same thing. Yes, right? that's correct. This. Um, this year it's open for six months uh, as an initial uh, sign up period. So October 1st through March 31st. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, they will not be after March 31st. They will not be able to enroll in, again um, until October 7th of 2014. Next year. Okay. And again, and then it will only run um, through, I believe, the middle of December. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's roughly about a two month time period at the end of every year after this initial year. Mm -hmm. So every year people, if they haven't done it already, they'll be able to do it next year. Yes. Or that's switch correct. to some other, you know, yes. is it, I know what we do here, you can check and compare is a different provider maybe come up who has different, something better for you that you can switch to? Um, not so. except, and it has to be during open enrollment. Right, that's okay. what I mean, yeah, yeah. during the open enrollment. Yeah. And so of course there are always exceptions. For example, mm -hmm. um, someone uh, who is not going through an employer to get this, mm -hmm. if they do, um, get on with an employer, um, they might be able to, to get insurance through that employer right. um, outside of open enrollment, mm -hmm. you know, but, yeah. you know, there are exceptions, okay? And um, cool. the other thing about patrons applying online is, again, just like income taxes, um, they can find out much sooner about their acceptance. Um, and uh, that, I will say, is probably one of the nice features about this, is if they fill out the application online and assuming that they've got everything um, filled out correctly and they submit it, they should be able to um, fig hear back um, specifically in a very short amount of time. Now, the one other thing that people are probably going to um, ask about is starting in 2014, if consumers do not have some type of health insurance, they might pay a tax penalty. Now, uh, obviously, we don't know what that would be. It's definitely on a person-to-person -person basis, um, but uh, there is that possibility. So I'm not sure why it's blacked out. Yeah, I'm not sure either. <laughs> the slide will be complete when you get it. Yeah, that's correct. 
Okay, um, I want to move on to what can libraries do right now to prepare other than have the basic information about what the um, Affordable Care Act is, what it can do, and how um, you can help your patrons. Well, um, I, I've outlined a few things here as um, very specific ideas and then also some more general ideas that leave things open to your imagination as an individual library serving your individual community. For example, um, you could attend webinars or view archived sessions like this one. <laughs> and as uh, Krista mentioned, this uh, webinar is um, recorded and will be available later today so that if your staff is on the desk right now and they can't watch this, they can go back in later, and, and there are, and I'm going to show you later um, some uh, websites where uh, web, webinars are available. Now, um, I did uh, link to Web Junction in this one, in that um, Web OCLC Web Junction has a section on eHealth that has lots of different um, information about the Affordable Care Act and how libraries can help, but they also have webinars. And so if you um, scroll down to the bottom of the eHealth Health page, there are um, archived webinars that you can um, listen to and view. So, and that's just one example. So um, as we're going through here, uh, there will be other places where you can see um, professional information, um, professional webinars, you know, directed at librarians and uh, information uh, providers that you can go to um, for uh, training. And uh, just to get yourself up to speed with as much information as possible. Um, and, and right off the bat, too, I want to say, read as much as possible as you can about um, the Affordable Care Act. Uh, keep up with your local newspaper. Uh, find out what articles they're printing about this. Um, all professional websites and publications. Um, for example, here in Nebraska, we have uh, system administrators in various areas of the, of the state, and they all um, put out a newsletter. And so we've tried to make sure that they have information that they can put in their newsletters to make sure all of their um, libraries uh, have some information to go on. So. I've seen some other librarians I know across the country in different states talking about um, health care um, uh, presentations that they're going to workshops in their own areas too, yes. that are being done in person ones too, like uh -huh. their city maybe. Um, or county doing something. So yes, that's correct. In fact, I actually have some links for some things that are that I happen to know are going on here in Lincoln and Omaha uh, areas um, as to exactly you know, that type of thing. So. Another idea that you can do for your library is to add a widget um, or badge to your website directing patrons to the health insurance marketplace. And um, this particular uh, page is put out by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. And uh, actually, if you type in cms.gov, it will get you, uh, and then Marketplace, it will get you to this page. There are lots of things. Um, mainly, if you go to the Get Official Resources, there are publications and articles for reading you know, as to what all this is about. Um, what the research has been leading up to this, uh, multimedia ideas, um, your widgets and badges are here, and uh, information on how to get those, logos that you can use, um, materials in Spanish uh, and other languages, um, partner resources. So this page is, is very valuable and one of, the, one of the top websites that I recommend uh, for professional materials. Um, another idea is if you have research database websites um, on your uh, library catalog or your library website, um, add healthcare.gov as one of the entries and uh, try to make it prominent so that people can uh, see it easily. Don't, uh, 
one of the most frustrating things for me is to visit a library's website and you have to um, search 10 times and keep going forward because something's so buried that it's, you can't find it. This is something that needs to be right out front. Um, so if you have databases um, on your website, um, add healthcare.gov and, and make it easy for patrons to find. Um, another idea is to print out and provide fact sheets to patrons. Um, something didn't work. Okay. Oh, it's not. This is just not like that. Go ahead and try and do it. And see if it yep. Okay. Um, actually, if I go t back to uh, CMS.gov and go to um, publications and articles. There, these are the fact sheets, um, key dates. Um, a lot of those have passed. The things you need to remember now are October 1st, December 15th, January 1st, and March 31st. But if you still want those, um, yeah, it will give you a list. And this is a printable sheet. Okay. Yeah, I was very impressed by the CMS website. There's so much I already was. they've created for people, yes, for librarians. That's correct. And this is for anyone helping people apply that you can just go grab these. They've written the articles for you already. They've created the nice flyers you can just yes. send off to a printer. Yeah. So much work. Uh, yeah, it done. is. <laughs> yeah, and, and this way you don't have to reinvent the wheel, mm -hmm. you know, by gathering all of this information. Um, but the one I was trying to, to link to was get ready to enroll in the marketplace. And uh, this is what you can uh, print, again, print out, have a stack of them, um, hand out to your patrons as they ask what they can do in the month before October 1st, okay? And these are just step-by-step -step instructions as to what they can do. Um, the things to think about when choosing a health plan, that fact sheet is always there, too, is also there, too. They can go there to find um, uh, information about uh, what they will need uh, when it comes to uh, getting ready to fill out an application. Like, for example, they'll need their Social Security number. number. They'll need uh, employer and income information for every member of the household. If, they're if you're trying to uh, get an entire family enrolled, you need all that information for every person you're trying to enroll. Um, if you have any current health insurance plans, uh, you'll need policy numbers, you know, because all of that's factored in. Um, and uh, also, too, uh, a completed employer coverage tool for every job-based plan you or someone in your household is eligible for. Now, uh, this is all available at the healthcare.gov. And when you go to uh, getting started to, with the enrollment process, again, it will walk you through step by step uh, with what you need to apply, including any forms that you need to have filled out uh, ahead of time. Other additional ideas that uh, libraries can think about um, trying to set up or to do to help their patrons. You could partner with community organizations, uh, AARP. Um, if you're out of, uh, outside of Nebraska, find out, go to the AARP.org website, find out uh, your state contact information. Uh, you should have a state office, and usually in the capital city, not always, but usually in the capital city. Contact them. Um, contact the local health department. Um, here in, in Nebraska, Community Action is our community assistance group. Um, so contact someone like Community Action, whoever your community assistance group is, to schedule and prevent, uh, present Affordable Care Act and health insurance marketplace programs in the library or other community locations. Uh, for example, I do know, and I've, I've mentioned this later in one of my slides, that um, Lincoln is uh, AARP and League of Women Voters have mm -hmm. teamed up and they're going to be doing a program in one of the local churches. Um, so, you know, 
just some ideas. Uh, be thinking about who your community organizations are that you can team up with to come in and um, do presentations in the library or do them in other community locations like churches and uh, you know, things like that. Um, also, you can print out patron handouts and post announcements about the programs um, that you've set up uh, and you can post them by doors, on the library website, um, near computers, uh, wherever your computer stations are, if you have a separate computer room for public computers, post announcements and uh, information uh, about the Affordable Care Act and the marketplace. Uh, make the information, if you're posting it on your website, again, make it easy to find. You can create a one-stop shopping display of announcements and handouts, including contact information for local area navigator organizations, which I'm going to talk about in just a moment, and also health center counselors, which I'm also going to talk about. Uh, one example I'd like to use is the Topeka Shawnee County Library in um, Topeka, Kansas, has created um, a wall of uh, handout slots um, just for Affordable Care Act and um, the healthcare marketplace. So that, and it's um, a lot of handouts like I've just shown you that are available on the uh, websites that you can print out and uh, just have whole stacks of them so that people can just go by and, and pick what they need and then um, take that to help them uh, get signed up. You can also post basic information sheets in the library's public computer areas, which I've just mentioned. You know, if you do have like a separate room for just computers, um, post some more flyers there. Consider, uh, and again, I'm going to talk about this in just a little bit, uh, you might consider having a librarian or two on your staff. Um, apply for and get training as an application assister um, and a certified application counselor. Now, um, back at the um, Center for Medicare Services um, website, there was information on um, applying for uh, becoming an application assister or a certified application counselor. So uh, keep that cms.gov uh, website in mind uh, for information on how to apply to become a, a certified application counselor. Um, web, when we listened to one of the Web Junction uh, webinars, that was uh, something that they suggested is that maybe have somebody on staff um, who can, who is certified to answer questions and give advice. Mm -hmm. Because as usual, you know, in, in most cases, staff is not allowed to give advice on uh, what thing, what uh, programs you should choose, what information mm -hmm. or uh, insurance uh, program you should choose. But a certified application counselor who's received extra training uh, would be able to give mm -hmm. advice like that. Yeah. So just something to consider. Um, another idea would be uh, any time you're at uh, or your library is involved in another event in the community, take brochures, fact sheets, and uh, any other materials you have like uh, program announcements to those events. Um, make these available for public service radio announcements and also public service newspaper articles um, about uh, various public forums and programs uh, that you might have set up for your community. Get the word out there. So whatever form of communication you can come up with, um, pass it on. Yeah, pass on the information. And also, too, um, when you print out um, or make up uh, handouts and sheets and things to, for your, your patrons, customize handouts. Uh, put your own library's logo on there um, and your own library's contact information so that it's not quite so generic and also too if somebody's got a question they can call 
um, and ask for more information, and then you can direct them you know, to the right place. Now, this is, at the moment, this is where um, the part of my presentation gets a little bit Nebraska-specific. Um, the government announced, and this was actually Department of Health and Human Services a couple of weeks ago, uh, announced who the navigators by state are going to be. And um, here in Nebraska, we have two navigator organizations. Now, a navigator is... Um, someone who uh, has received extensive training um, and they will be providing a vital role in helping consumers prepare electronic and paper applications. Um, they will also help the person uh, establish eligibility and for uh, like Medicare and the, the child insurance, child, uh, children's health insurance program. Um, navigators include um, uh, navigators will also provide outreach and education to consumers um, to raise awareness about the marketplace here in Nebraska. Um, the grant that we've received, uh, and uh, more specifically, um, or more especially through Community Action in Nebraska, um, there will be um, 62 navigators added, um, individual navigators uh -huh. added to the state uh, based on the, the uh, grant. So, but uh, the two organizations that are here in Nebraska are the Ponca Tribe of Nebraska, and uh, their main office is li listed as uh, Niobrara and telephone number, and then also to the Community Action of Nebraska, which, which is our community, our community assistance group here in Nebraska. Now, the, um, I'm just going to click very briefly. This is the main page for uh, the Ponca Tribe and um, lists their various uh, office locations around the state, mostly in the eastern part of the state. But then Community Action of Nebraska, um, I've actually taken you to their main website and to their map, okay? so that when you go to the website, and their website is canhelp.org, you can um, actually click on the particular area that you live in that is going to be covered uh, by their services. And if you scroll down a little bit, it will give you their main uh, site in that particular region, or their, their main office in that particular region. But then it will also give you that region's website. And uh, from there, you can go to find their, all of the locations in that region, you know, which is really nice. So that if you are in, um, in the northeast part of Nebraska, which is actually in some parts, uh, in some ways covered uh, in two ways by Community Action and Ponca Tribe, um, but you're in Cedar County and you want to know um, wh where exactly to go uh, for community action uh, help and navigator help uh, in Cedar County, uh, this website will do it. So what I've done here so that people can uh, access this later um, is I have um, created links for all of the community action regions in Nebraska. Uh, including their main office locations and their main telephone numbers. Yeah. And if you're not in Nebraska, um, I've added to the um, delicious links for this show. Um, I found finally, I knew I'd seen it before, the, there's a location on the CMS website that talks about the navigators and has a list of all of them for all over the country. That's correct. So yeah. um, I've got that added so you can go there and um, find out who got the grant money in your state yes. so that you can connect with them. Yes, correct. Thank you, Krista. I was looking for it while you were talking. Yeah. <laughs> it found it, it took a little you read my mind. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Now, the other um, 
groups of, uh, and, and a lot of these health care, health care centers do fall under the community action groups, but, more, but specifically these are health centers um, around the state of Nebraska um, that are also going through training to provide navigators and certified application counselors um, to help people one-on-one -on -one with uh, signing up for insurance. And uh, I've uh, gone through and listed all of the health care centers. There are six here in the state of Nebraska. And um, highlighted them with uh, links to their web pages, um, their location, their main um, city location, and their main telephone numbers. Like, for example, Panhandle Community Services in uh, Garing and um, East Central District Health Department in Columbus. Um, Garing is western Nebraska. Um, Columbus is a little bit more central. Uh, North Fork is, you know, east central. And then Lincoln and Omaha are east. So um, if you need more specific information so far as locations, um, like, for example, in the, the gearing, um, you can click on that, go to the website, and then it will uh, give you locations uh, for all of their offices in that region and all of their health care centers uh, in that region. Because so, not everybody lives in gearing <laughs> in western Nebraska. So um, let's see, what do we have next? Oh, also in uh, Nebraska, um, the insurance companies that have applied for um, um, permission uh, from the state to sell insurance through the marketplace um, are uh, four of them uh, here in Nebraska, and grammatically I realized that just was not right. But anyway, um, there are four that have applied for and are hoping to uh, sell through the marketplace. Blue Cross and Blue Shield in Nebraska, which is already the largest provider here in Nebraska. Uh, Coventry Healthcare of Bethesda, Maryland, uh, also already doing business here in Nebraska. Co-Opportunity, Cooperative Healthcare Provider from Iowa, and Health Alliance Midwest Incorporated, a managed care company from Urbana, Illinois. Those four have applied for and are in the process of uh, getting permission uh, to sell. Um, if they pursue, it could be all four or it could be less. Um, the one company here in Nebraska, just in case anybody's wondering, that did not apply was United Healthcare, hmm. uh, which uh, no reason was given as to why they didn't. Um, they are uh, second largest to um, Blue Cross and Blue Shield. So. Now, for the agents and brokers like them, I did actually also see when I was looking at the pages for the navigators and apply counselors, mm -hmm. there's also training for them as well. Yes, so that's correct. So that's what you're talking about. They had to apply to the federal government, I yes. guess. Mm -hmm. So even I'm thinking that because they have to also apply and be approved and go to the, through their own training, ideally, you know, sometimes you might think, well, if you send them to the actual people trying to sell it, they're just going to scam them or do something wrong. Yes. They've mm -hmm. actually got people the same as the navigators and counselors that have gone through official training on how they're supposed to deal with yes. the um, consumers applying for yes, it. Yes, that's yeah. correct. Um, everybody had to go through training, whether it was the navigators, the counselors, um, mm -hmm. the uh, insurance companies, you know, like you've just said, mm -hmm. everybody has had to go through. Uh, training, yeah. so or will, uh, yeah, right. yeah. Like you said, they've applied. Yeah, yeah. that they have applied. So. Now, um, so far as um, more patron assistance uh, ideas, again, I want to reiterate. First, remember that uh, questions about health care are like taxes and legal issues. We help patrons find the information. We don't give them advice. Um, and that's what I'm hoping, you know, that my uh, presentation today is helping you do is to figure out the ways to guide people to the information without doing it for them. Um, secondly, as leading providers of internet access and computer literacy training for people who lack internet resources at home, um, libraries can anticipate higher demand for computer services. 
Now, some ideas that along those lines that have come to mind to me is uh, I know some libraries are considering doing a dedicated terminal or terminals just for um, signing up for health care. Um, I know during tax season, some libraries uh, have dedicated terminals just mm -hmm. for filling out their, their tax returns and submitting them. Um, this is an, that's an idea um, that you might consider for um, the health care enrollment as well. And um, there are several ways that patrons can get help one-on-one -on -one, uh, with enrollment. And first of all is online chat through the healthcare.gov website. And uh, it's at the bottom of the page here, at least it was. <laughs> But on the main uh, healthcare.gov, uh, there is a, yes, there it is, at the um, live chat. Click on that, and it will connect you uh, with someone that you can just type in and uh, ask questions uh, all you need to. Other ways um, to get information and uh, assistance with help is uh, calling the 1-800 number. The 1-800 number has actually been up and running since June, as, as well as the main website, the healthcare.gov. It's been up and running since June. So there are people there now, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And then the um, uh, assisted uh, telephone is, uh, the telephone number is listed there as well. So um, if a patron comes in and says, I need to, talk to someone about this, but uh, you might not have a navigator set up yet, they can call right now and, and talk to someone. There are navigators who are in the process of being trained. Uh, like I said, um, the navigator sites here in uh, Nebraska are the Community Action of Nebraska and the Ponca Tribe. Um, those groups are going through training now um, as navigators. They are unbiased individuals trained mm -hmm. to help consumers, small businesses, and employees as they look for health co coverage options. Um, certified application counselors, again, I mentioned that, uh, very similar to navigators, not quite as much training, um, but they can still um, help people uh, apply for, and uh, most, I have noticed that most of the the certified application counselors are being offered through the community health centers. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and um, then also to application assisters um, can assist with enrollment, but not again, not quite as extensively trained as the certified and even the navigators, but can still, uh, if someone needs help, uh, actually just the physical part of filling out an application, th that's something that an application assister could do. Um, uh, I think, no, no, I think that's what's very important, I think, about this is, and I, I know that we've heard a lot of the library saying, librarians saying, I don't, I can't do this, I can't take their personal health information, I don't even know what to tell them to, um, how to help them decide what they ch should choose, what's the best health care insurance for them, and the whole point of this is you don't have to know that, just That's like everything correct. you do in your job. And the yes. um, I, the taxes is a perfect example. It's, yes, it's almost it exactly the same situation. Yes. You would never, in, in your wildest dreams, presume to help a person complete their taxes. Oh, Or give them no. financial advice on the best way to get this deduction or right. that tax shelter. <laughs> and you would certainly you, never give them legal advice no, either. Course, you know, yeah, you know where to send them for right. legal and advice. Exactly. Uh -huh. and so you know where, and that's what this all these resources are. There are people who are being trained to specifically yes. do that. And you want to find out who they are and make sure you send them to the right people. Yes, that's correct. I would also assume, because this is what happens, there will be groups, organizations, I'll just say people mm -hmm. out there who will claim that they can help and are maybe not the um, appropriate scammer artists, yes, whatever people trying to take advantage mm -hmm. of the consumers who don't know better. Um, and so you as, a, as librarians should also make sure whoever you are referring to people to are trying to help them with what you've done before. You've had someone come up and they've got the email in their um, 
met in their email that says, oh, look, I've just won the um, lottery from Ghana, and I want to <laughs> give them my information, and you help them realize that's not true. Yeah. Um, same kind of thing. Make mm -hmm. sure that these random people come who may are probably popping up all over the place they are. claiming they can help are not the ones that, you know, you direct people to the right place and say, here's the official people. These are the ones that have been trained, so this is it. If that's they're not correct. one of these people, mm -hmm. and you know, don't use them. And if someone comes to you as a library, I, I had someone else ask this um, in general. I saw some on, online, some librarian say, this group, blah, 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 who I've never heard of, has come to us, it wasn't in Nebraska, somewhere else, saying they would want to um, partner with us to help provide the information. And I said, that's nice. Have they gone through any of this training? Because if they haven't, I would, you know, think twice about that. Just because right. someone says they can come into your library and help the patrons doesn't mean they've been officially trained and these, these navigators, this is something, too, that I read on there, um, that they have to actually, they're, um, once they've gone through this training, they are required, there's rules and regulations on them by law that says they have to keep the information private, just like a yes. doctor level type yes, of that's privacy. Correct. Yes. So these, only the groups and people who have been through this training have that um, put upon them. Mm -hmm. Random people out there can help. There may be some very good groups that say, I'm willing to help the old, well, the elderly woman who came in and needs help. And that's nice of you being nice enough to help them. But are you required by law, like these people who are trained, not to divulge her personal information or help information? No. no. You might do it out of ethics, which is nice. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but um, be, so be wary of who comes to you asking to be yes. able to help. And make sure you get them to the right people. Yes, exactly. Now, healthcare.gov, if they chat with someone um, right. or talk to someone, um, healthcare.gov should give them, uh, they should have a list of who they can talk to in their area. Mm -hmm. And so that will be legitimate information. So um, if someone comes up, like Krista says, and, and says, um, this group says they can help me, um, ask where they got the information. Um, try to verify, and, and that's why it's so important for librarians um, to be aware of the groups that are qualified in their area to give um, assistance um, so that if someone comes up with, like Krista said, a, a group that you, know, you haven't heard of, um, find out where they got the information and then direct them in the right way yeah, to the right group. Um, some websites that I wanted to point out that are, I consider um, some of the best ones for uh, various types of information. Again, I can't say enough, healthcare.gov is the one website that every librarian and frontline service uh, person needs to be really familiar with in navigating because that's the one that is going to get used the most in helping people get signed up for insurance. Um, and I've already... Um, you know, clicked on that a couple of times so you've seen what it looks like. Um, if I have time, I am going to go back and help you navigate through some of that again. Um, the marketplace.cms.gov, again, that's the Center for Medicare and Medicaid uh, Services. Um, that's where you go for a lot of professional uh, information, your fact sheets that are printable, your logos, things that you can put on your website. Um, very, very valuable. Those top those two websites are my top two. Um, here in Nebraska, the Department of Insurance, and um, I realize this is, um, I'm not sure why it did that. Um, Bad thing. Yes. <laughs> um, and depending on what state you're in, go to your Department of Insurance website. Find out what they are doing uh, with, uh, and uh, you can either put it in as, uh, here in Nebraska, it's put in as uh, federal health care law. I found it. You want to type in? Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, it's a very short URL for us here. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. It's doi.nebraska.gov slash APA. Thank you. And I apologize for the bad link there. Yeah, we'll fix it. <laughs> Type in the www in there because sometimes. Oh, you got to do Nebraska. You have to spell it Nebraska. Oh, that's right. There it is. Okay, found it. And then just add oh. ACA to the end of the URL and it'll right. Get to it. Um, if you do happen to just go to a basic uh, to the basic website, um, you have to scroll down a little bit, but it is federal health care law. Yep. 
um, so here in Nebraska. And then they have it divided out into different um, topics. You have consumers and healthcare providers, agents and navigators, companies, and uh, marketplace and small business. Then if you click on consumers and healthcare providers, there is um, some information um, here. Um, usually the most recent thing that has come through the um, Department of Insurance is at the top, but um, things like navigator rules, um, documents like that, those are available through the, the uh, Department of Insurance. Um, there is the federally facilitated marketplace listed, uh, frequently asked questions, um, li the federal list of items required for application uh, for health care insurance, you know, lots of different documents that you can uh, go through. And then um, there is a find a navigator. And until October 1st, here in Nebraska, mm -hmm. this page is currently under construction. And that's because the navigators are still in uh, training, mm -hmm. and uh, until that has been completed and they're in place, they will not publish that. So, so that is the uh, Nebraska Department of Insurance. But if you're not in Nebraska, just do go to your uh, Department of Insurance mm -hmm. website and see what they have available, you know, for your state. Um, another um, idea that I uh, another website that I would suggest that I did not put down for Nebraska is uh, your own state's uh, Department of Health and Human Services. Find out what they're doing, uh, if anything. Some states are doing it differently, where here in Nebraska the Department of Insurance is doing a little bit more than the Department of Health and Human Services so far as outreach and uh, getting... They, I noticed, I remember when we started, when we did our session in July right after ALA, conference, um, that was one of the first ones that you found. You're like, oh my god, they've got, and they were already there. Yes. They were on uh -huh. top of yes, the Department were. of Insurance. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. Right. I was and um, <laughs> I, um, I, I do know that a lot of websites, uh, especially from the state perspective, are um, sending people directly to healthcare.gov or over to their state uh, Department of Insurance. So it just depends on your state. Um, here in Nebraska, um, our Department of Insurance is doing quite a bit. The American Library Association, um, and I'm not going to click on this one because oh, I, I see we're kind of running out of time, but they do have an outline of the Basic Affordable Care Act, so you can read the whole thing um, in, in its uh, real form, <laughs> in its original form. Um, uh, they also have a section for the role of libraries and a list of resources, including publications and webinars that you can listen to or, or view. Uh, Web Junction, same thing. They have uh, a, a different perspective, overview, webinars, and and some examples of what other libraries are doing um, in uh, helping prepare for Affordable Care Act and open enrollment. Um, I've included AARP for, uh, for the general website for AARP.org. Uh, this is General Affordable Care Act, uh, mostly from the re retired person's perspective, uh, but lots of good articles here. Um, AARP Nebraska, state office contact information. So if your community wants to try to get someone out to your area or to your library to, uh, like for example, Omaha Public Library, and I just happen to know about them, um, they have set up, um, starting in late September, set up an entire um, group of sessions where AARP is coming in to uh, talk to the public about uh, the Affordable Care Act and uh, open enrollment in the marketplace. Okay. Medline Plus is another one. Um, a different perspective, but um, ACA information, health insurance information, um, lots of good information uh, there as well. And um, some other um, examples that I wanted to be sure and give you are examples of actual public health care marketplace forums that are going on. Uh, I think I mentioned this earlier, the League of Women Voters um, of Lincoln and the um, Lancaster, Lincoln Lancaster County uh, AARP um, are 
have teamed up and they are doing uh, a session um, next week at, at one of the local churches and you know there's uh, address and, and time. Uh, the, again the Omaha Public Library um, are uh, doing a whole and I've only listed one here uh, from the whole group but they're um, starting September 17th yes they're doing like at least 10 for um, the uh, general public and then they're also doing a group that are uh, spe specific, sorry, my apologies, mm -hmm. specifically for uh, small businesses. Yeah, yeah for, that, for yeah. the shop. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, that's going to be helpful to them as the small businesses are the ones that are probably the most concerned and wondering, yes, what's, what do I have to do? I've never yes. dealt with this before. Exactly, yeah. right. And um, at the healthcare.gov website, um, it they have it divided into uh, three sections. The first one's for individuals and families. The second one is for small business. Mm -hmm. So if you're a small business wanting to go in and find out what do I need to do, but you might can't, might not be able to uh, attend a forum uh, or a you know, group session, uh, you can go to healthcare.gov and it will, uh, again, give you step-by-step uh, options as to uh, what you need to do. This is another one, a community forums on the health insurance marketplace co-sponsored by Community Health Endowment and the Lancaster County Medical Society. And um, they're all, they, I've just listed three that they're doing, but I think they actually had six listed um, as their um, forums. And if you have other questions of us here at the commission, um, I am kind of the point person on this. So feel, <laughs> feel free to call, contact, um, email me anytime uh, here at the Library Com Commission. This is my uh, contact information. And uh, I will be happy to answer uh, any and all questions. And as any good librarian, if I don't know the answer, I'll either find out for you or direct you to the person who knows. <laughs> So uh, I want to thank Krista for having me on this oh, morning. Of course. And uh, I hope that this has been helpful in, in uh, getting people thinking about ways that they can um, mm -hmm. help their patrons in uh, signing up for health care. Yeah, and I think it's it's good to know there's so much information out there. There I, is. When it was yes. first, I, and I know I, I, I had the same reaction, I don't even work in a public library. When the announcement came from AL, at ALA, mm -hmm. that ALA said, libraries will be helping, I'm I, like everyone else, said, uh, what? <laughs> we will what? Who, who told us? Who said this? And then you kind of you know, step back, wait a day, take a big breath, and say, you know what? You're right. They're going to come in no matter what. Mm -hmm. Yes, they're, that's they're, uh, The mm -hmm. consumers, the, our patrons are going to come to us for help because they always do anyway. Mm -hmm. I think what ALA really meant was let's be prepared yes, ahead of time. Exactly. So we're getting money. We're doing IMLS. They gave IMLS grant money to yes. Web Junction to set up those workshops and training through them. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it was just a real heads up of this is coming whether you like it or not. And right. the people are going to come in, so let's be prepared. Let's do something. Let's be organized. Exactly. And there's been so much information out there. It's awesome. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, and to help figure it out. Yeah, it, it can be overwhelming. So if, you, mm -hmm. if you're trying to do your own research as to, you know, what do I need to know, um, that's uh, you can get bogged down very quickly in all the different websites and, and uh, trying to find, you know, what we need to know for, for helping patrons. And that's why what I tried to do this morning was pull together um, specific things from lots of different websites, um, some of it specific to Nebraska, but a lot of it useful for oh, yeah. everybody. If, we're doing, um, if our groups in Nebraska are doing this, look in your state. Like that previous couple of slides of the specific, yes. specific events going on here yes. in Nebraska, there's going to be something in your state, same type of groups doing the same yes. kind of things. Go out and find them, connect with them. Yeah, and very possibly in your, in your location right there, in your town. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever your community groups are, find out, um, you know, what they're doing, if anything, if they're not, partner with them. Yeah, and if they know. need a place to hold the event, yes, the workshop absolutely. or the training yes. or the help, um, tell them to come to the library. And absolutely. We'll give you the, the space. We'll give you the meeting room to do it. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Cool. All right. So does anybody have any questions uh, or comments? We've got one question, one comment, just thanks for a good job. <laughs> and um, one comment from someone, which is true, that some states are not, um, some um Governments, governors of some states are not all in on this yes. Health Care Act, and yes. there may be pushback from them, and not a lot of um, help coming from the top down. But 
it's happening anyway so um do it from your side any mm -hmm. anyway you get out there and get what you can um that cms website i think what you were just talking about is being overwhelmed by so many things you'll find articles and things i think it's a great place it's got a lot of stuff consolidated in yes. one place yes that uh, is true. some help guides yeah. here's some articles and really, if at the very least you don't have a special person you can assign to this, you don't have a specific um, computer you can assign to this, at the very least know that that site is there and find those things and print yes. out a flyer and something from yes, there. Yes, exactly. No matter you, how yeah. small you are, um, print out one of their flyers and you know, so you've got something that you can just hand to patrons. Right. And yeah. you don't have to know. You just say, go here. It's all yes, there. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Here's the phone number to call. Yes. You know, and, and give them the spiel as you have, I'm sure, many times before. We are not allowed to give you legal advice, medical advice, whatever, so that's, here's the people yep, who can. That's right. Keep that yeah. in mind. You know, and that's why the, the tax um, example and the legal example are mm -hmm. just, it, this, it falls kind of in that line where you don't give the advice. Um, you just know where to send them uh, or you can print off a form for them. So does anybody have any questions, comments? Just a lot of thanks for the great info and good sites yeah. comments we've so far. Um, doesn't look like anybody's had any specific questions except for that one we had earlier. So um, I think we will wrap it up for today. Um, thank you very much, Mary, for all yeah, that great thank info. Thank you, Krista. Um, we have then recorded the slides we will, um, I have. Um, I've added, I think I've caught all of the URLs and put them into a delicious, but I'll go back and double check. And <laughs> <laughs> thank you, um, and I apologize the for the bad ones. <laughs> Um, to make sure I caught all of them. So when the recording is done, um, it'll be sent out to everyone here. And all of you who attended, you'll get a, um, an announcement of that with a link to it so you can have all of these resources um, available to you to grab. So let's see. Did one of these in here? Oh, I don't know. You just type it in a couple slides for me. Oh, sure. <laughs> so thank you very much for um, attending this morning. Um, and I hope you'll join us next week when, what is our topic next week? Oh, ALA, yes. <laughs> um, next week's topic is um, a student scholarship student reflections on ALA 2013. Um, here in Nebraska, we have a 21st century um, librarian program, IMLS grant, where we help um, library school students who are going to school for library science. Um, with uh, money and things, and some of the money can send them to conferences, and we send a few of them to ALA this year, and the people who attended, you can see listed there, are going to come and join us next week and tell us about their experiences um, as students attending, possibly first-time attendees, I'm not exactly sure, um, but Catherine Brockmeyer, who is in charge of that grant here at the Library Commission, is going to have some people on, so we'll hear about some of our um, scholarship students who went to ALA for um, this year and see how what they learned up there. Mm -hmm. So sign up and uh, join us for that next week. Also, Encompass Live is on Facebook, so if you are a big Facebook user, you can follow us there. Um, we post um, announcements of when we've got new sessions coming up, when the recording is ready. Um, you can see here, I did a quick reminder this morning that don't forget this morning, this is what we're doing as our topic. Um, Encompass Live is free and available to anyone out there to watch um, the live sessions or the recordings, so um, go ahead and follow us there. And um, cool. Other than that, thank you very much, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.